Welcome, 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 welcome to our youth to Sunday school on the go. Uh, we have a great lesson this morning. I'm just gonna play this song to get us get everyone as they come on in so they can just understand what God, what we all want to hear, which is well done by Dietrich Hayden. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. verses 9 through 17, and we're going to break it up, and so uh, I'm going to get uh, uh, Evangelist uh, Gary to pray us in. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you upon this morning. Thank you for our visitors. We thank you, Father, for every family represented here this morning. Ask you to speak to the speaker this morning. Send the God sent word, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody need to hear a word this morning. We we wait on you, Father God. The David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait on the Lord, I said. Lord, we're waiting this morning. 
Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're going to go ahead and read the scriptures and then I'm going to go with my uh, tell you what today means, give you the prophecies, and then we're going to talk about the lesson. So the scriptures are Revelation 7, chapter 7, and we're reading verses 9 through 17. How many verses? About eight verses, huh? So we're gonna split it up. Nine. Okay, we'll split it up two a piece. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have my hubby go first. Okay. And Shanana, you'll be behind him. The Montgomery's okay. will be next, and then uh Brother Vanoa, he can read the last. Uh, verse nine and ten reads. From the King James Version. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and into the Lamb. King James Version, verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. This is the NIV version. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. NIV as well, they are, therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will be not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. Amen. Amen. Brother Benoit? Maybe he might be driving. Maybe he can't uh, read verse 17. You want me to read it? I mean, yeah, go ahead, Sean. Okay, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. King James Version. Amen, amen, amen. 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 So let's look at first what today means. We know that the Today is November. It's like the first week of November. Today is November the 7th, uh, 2020, 2021. So number 11 is the number of judgment and biblical prophecy. The number seven, we know number seven is the number of completion or the perfect uh, spiritual perfection. And the number 21 is the strength of God's grace. And so, uh, and how God helps us through distress. So the prophecy that I heard God say this morning was, this week, many promises will be fulfilled. God has spoken specifically to you about something he wants you to complete. When you complete the task God has set before you, the heavens will begin to open even more. You may mm -hmm. be holding up your own or your next blessing, your next move into God's authority your next step in your journey to be one with God. More biblical prophecies about your purpose will be revealed to you throughout this month. Things will things we consider to be impossible will be possible. Mm, wow. Let me say that again. Things yeah. we consider to be impossible will be possible. God will manifest his authority and healing in finances, in peace, this month. Yes. That's what God shared with me today. Hmm. So let's look at the title of the lesson. The title is United in Praise. 
united in praise. Of course, you know, we know about united, or at least we're supposed to, because we are in the United States of America. So we say, we don't act like we're united a lot of times, but we're supposed to be united. So, yeah. but hey, but guess what? You might you might squab with your brother or sister, but when it comes to fight time, y'all gonna become united. Amen. Yeah. So we united yeah. when it comes to fight time. Yeah. So united means joined together for a common purpose or for a common feeling. When you yeah. unite, we know that united, we can be united in marriage, we can be united in relationships, we can be united uh in business deals. Uh, they call it contracts. I mean, we can be united in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. But for the Christian, is it extremely important for us to be united with Jesus, to be united with God, our Father? Why? Because in Him comes all the blessings, comes all the things that are purpose. You know, sometimes we get caught up in what is my purpose. Well, one of the purposes of God is for you to, first of all, be saved and filled with his Holy Ghost. And secondly, for you to tell somebody else about the salvation of the Lord. He said, he told, he sent out his disciples to do that. He didn't really send them out to heal and all of those things that came with salvation. That was a part of it. But he came actually to save the sick and the lost. Amen. Amen. So why is the be, being united? Of course, we know praise is giving God thanks and giving God glory. So why is it so important for us to be unified? I'm going to give you a couple of quotes and I'm going to ask you to tell me what you think about it. So one, unification rules the nation. United we stand, divided we fall. Union is strength. So what do you guys think about that when you hear those, those things? Anybody? When you hear united, we stand, divided, we fall. Yes. I mean, it just makes sense. <laughs> that's that's what I think about. Um, I think um, a house divided, it's hard for you to get anything accomplished. Um, but if you're all on the same page, there's a lot that can be done. That's what I think about. <clears throat> Amen. Anybody else want to comment on that? Jesus said, if two or three come together in my name, they are mine and Mr. You know, uh, one put a thousand a flight, two put 10,000 a flight, and on and on and on. So it must be a, a reason Solomon said, Two is better than one, and a three-four card is not easily broken. So it's unity. You know, it's it, it's something. I remember when they built the tower, when they was building the tower, a bell, and uh, <laughs> unity was getting that tower done, but they were doing it for the wrong reason, and they was just, they was confused. But unity, if we stand together, we can accomplish anything. So would you say it would be fair to say that the enemy many times tries to divide us on many areas in our life? Yes, ma'am. Because he knows the power of unification within the body of Christ. Amen. That's why it's so important. That's why he tries to put brothers and sisters up against one another. That's why he right. tries to put mothers and fathers against one another. That's why, because he knows that once you come together in his name, that you have the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Mother, Brother Bernard, did you have something you want to say? Or was you just trying to value nothing? I was just making sure I was on mute, but <laughs> okay. First, first thing that came to mind when you said that, or uh, uh, that's like almost touched on it, was uh, Christ said that a house of fire is going to be done. Uh, the work by, you know, he's trying to say by people, but uh, that's the first thing that comes to mind is uh, that, uh, as he said, the house 
body cannot, shall not, will not stand. And uh, there's a reason why. I mean, he never says anything in his words to mess with the spirit. You know, golf while we find him. But that's the thing came to mind was that the house of body can't stand. Amen. 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 Shana, mm -hmm. do you have something real quick or? I'm just so glorified to know that um, unity begins with us every Sunday mm -hmm. coming together as a group. And I just believe that wherever, you know, I agree with my brother-in-law where he said, wherever God is, that's where we are. I mean, where he, wherever two or more in his name is where he is. And mm -hmm. so therefore it's more than two. So I'm just glad that we, it's coming together unified in his name. So Amen. that's basically it. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you fine. <laughs> um, I was just gonna say that um I was thinking about when they accused Jesus of being part of uh Satan's kingdom and how uh, Jesus rebuked them saying, if I be part of his kingdom, then uh I've come to divide his kingdom. And uh, I come with his kingdom. And if I came with his kingdom, how could I divide his kingdom? Uh, in other words, uh, Jesus was saying this can't be true because uh, a house divided, just like uh, Sister Kelly said, it cannot stand. Amen. Amen. Let's look at uh, the background from Revelations real quick. Uh, author, of course, is John. It was written in AD 43, um, and it is, it is written in prophetic authority. So Revelations is written in prophetic authority. That's right there is enough to just jump and shout by itself. So there's some things that happen before we get to verse uh, chapter 7. So we have the introduction. We have the letters to the seven churches. Um, we kind of know about that. We have the visions of the end times, the new earth and the new heaven. Uh, we have the heavenly throne. We're sitting at the heavenly throne. We have the seals, uh, the scrolls that were sealed uh, being opened. And then we come to verse uh, chapter seven, verse nine in chapter seven. And so uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, and I, I should have said this earlier, but uh, the prayer topic of the week, I forgot to give y'all that. The prayer topic of the week is unfailing. Unfailing. And if you wanted to kind of look at a verse, uh, Limitations 3, 22 and 23 would be the verses. And so we're going to be looking at those verses this week, thinking about the unfailing love of Jesus Christ, the unfailing love of God. And great is thy faithfulness. Because he's faithful to us sometimes when we're not faithful to him. Yeah. So let's look at the verses that we're going to talk about. It. So. Uh, verse, the ver first eight verses is talking about Israel being sealed and how they, but we know that we have, have been grafted in, amen? And so in verse nine, verse nine, the first thing that uh, caught my attention was the words, I looked. And God just made me think, he said, you know, you have to recognize who God is before you can understand his purpose. So you have to intentionally look for God to be able to find him. You have to intentionally think about what God is doing in your life or what you need to be doing for God. It doesn't happen by happenstance. It's not an accident that we're even here this morning. It is all in God's plan. Then the second word in verse nine that uh, sticks out to me is multitude. And then he said, no one could number. I want y'all to say this with me. It's not in the number. It's not in the numbers. Okay, let me it's try that one more time. Number. It's not in the numbers. It's, it's not, not in, the in the numbers. Yes, yes, it's not in the numbers because it's God is sharing with us and letting us know right now. We already know where two or three are gathered together in his name. He is in the midst. We talked about mm -hmm. that. But we are looking at the fact that many, there were many in front of the throne of God. Many people that were in doing the great tribulation. And we're going to talk about the great tribulation one day. But we know that this during the time where the spirit of God was uh, removed from the earth and people that hadn't already accepted Jesus Christ as their savior uh, had to go through uh, tribulation and make a decision whether or not they were going to believe God or not. And so they gave their lives during this time frame. So mm. it's not in the numbers. 
is mm -hmm. not in the numbers. And then he talks about the nations and tribes and people and tongues, which is different religions and cultures. And then he says, standing. They were standing and giving God honor, just like we stand when we are reading the word of God in church a lot of times. That's just mm -hmm. to honor God. It's not because somebody uh, made us do that. That's just honoring God and his word. Yes. And they were standing before the throne, which is authority and royalty. And let the lamb, which is Jesus Christ, of course, and sacrifice and his sacrifice. They cried out about salvation. Mm. This is our single most important purpose, salvation. Without it, we can't do nothing. We won't make it. And if we don't witness, my husband talked about last week how we get that uh, jewel in our crown when we, you know, just tell somebody about him. It's their choice whether or not they come to, to God, uh, but we do have to share. And so I'm going to run down to verse 12. And I want to share with you what I was looking at. When I looked at verse 12, the first thing I saw was amen. Did you know that amen is when, you, when you're in agreement with the final purpose of whatever you're saying amen to? We say amen in church like out of habit, but a lot of times we don't realize what we're saying amen to. But mm. amen is saying that you're in agreement. Yeah. I'm going to say, uh, what's going on there? Because I'm about to, uh, okay. I'm going to leave that alone. I, you know, I'm looking, right? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Never mind, y'all. Never mind. We're going to move on. Okay. <laughs> no. Everybody didn't watch the okay. video on um, this big ass uh, What was it? I told, I told you she was on camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> So be careful what you say um, amen to and what you get in agreement with when it comes mm -hmm. to the things of God. Because sometimes we get in agreement with things that are not biblical. I'm going to say that mm -hmm. one more time. Sometimes we get in agreement with things that are not biblical, that are not in the word of God, that God has not given to us at all. But because the pastor said it, because uh, uh, some minister or uh, evangelist came through, a prophetess came through and said it. <laughs> we get in agreement with it, and it's not the way to go. Right. Be careful what you say amen to. Amen. Be careful what you say amen to. Study so then we're looking at where it says blessing, glory, and wisdom. Mm. The blessings are the finances and health that God gives us on a regular basis. The mm. glory is our relationship with God. Wisdom is a relationship with knowledge and man. He talks about gratefulness and reverence and power and authority. All these things belong to us. These are ours. These are promises that God gave us. Yes. Mm. So we should not walk around ignorant. I, I think uh, uh, your papa used to say, his papa used to say, uh, don't be, you, be not ignorant, my brother. That's in the scripture, but he would use it for different <laughs> things. Uh, one thing he would tell my husband, I have you not to be ignorant, my brother. Don't you know you ain't supposed to wear no cowboy hat? <laughs> I mean, he would use it for different things, but God does not want yeah. us to be ignorant. God wants us to walk in power and authority, which he gave us. Amen? He does and so, uh, <laughs> so let's look at verse, uh, verse 13. Yeah, tells us the question that we all ask. Who are you? But only God can answer that. Who am I? God gives us the answer. He lets us know who he is. Amen? Amen. In verse 15, we talk about service. Verse 16, he said that he, those that are in service. Okay, I'm going to break this down. Just let me, hold up. So in verse 15 and 16 and 17, they all go together. So let's see what it says here. First of all, we have to be in service for God. We got to be in service for God. For God. Not for man, not to get no accolades, not to get anything like that, but we have to be in service for God. <laughs> they have to be in service for God. And when, because we're in service to God, 
Because we're in service to God, guess what happens? No longer yeah. hungry. Sure. No longer thirst. Perfect temperature. Yes. And, and we're led by a shepherd. He leads us to living waters and fountains. And sure. he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Now he mm -hmm. says that about these people that have went through the great tribulation, but this is a part of our promises as well. Right. And if we get in service to God, that God will take care of it all. Now, yes, am I saying that we're not going to have no pain, no sorrow, no trouble, or any of that? No. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, is that we have an advocate, we have authority in Christ Jesus to take care of it all. Yes. We just have to walk in. Thank you. We just have to know what God said about us. That's right. Amen. 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 So when Amen. we get unified in praise, when we begin to understand who we are, when we begin to understand whose we are, when we begin to give God glory and praise in all things, there's nothing, nothing that we can't do to God yes. in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. There is nothing, but you got to know that. Yes. So right now, I'm going to open it up for comments. Anything that you want to say, because we're getting close to my 10, 10, 10 minute time frame plus, I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to say something on this thing. Unified unity in praise. Giving God glory for who he is and whose we are. Yes. I am not a bastard child. No. Did I say that on TV? I mean, did I say that on? I'm not an orphan. No. God. <laughs> I'm God's child. That's right. I'm God's child. I'm not overlooked. I am not invisible. I am a child of the king. Yes. I am a princess in Christ Jesus. So I'm opening it up for others to talk. I would like to say ever since I've been eating my word, God, he's been keeping me filled up. For some reason here lately, sometimes I forget to eat. I have to remind myself or either sky will um, that we ain't ate yet because I love reading my word and staying in it. And also I've noticed that like you were saying, once you realize that you are who you are in Jesus, because he's always there, he never left. And the Holy Spirit is stagnant. He's inside of us. What I mean is, is that everywhere I go, like for instance, the Disney's the other day, before I even got there, a God had already worked it out. I didn't even have to open my mouth and tell them. They told me. So I'm just saying, when you put faith into God every day, like I do, and we all do, pray and, you know, try to live by his word. He is a man of his word. He do not lie. And when he say he's there, he's there. So. That's all I have to say. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you already done paid the way. Amen. Anybody else? <clears throat> For no one? Y'all going to say y'all going to make me call on them? The Montgomery? <laughs> y'all going to make me call y'all out like this? <laughs> Come on, Montgomery. Y'all go first and then Brother Benoit can go. What, yeah. what was the, you didn't ask a specific question. You're I just did. talking about the said, lesson. Talk about it. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sister in law, Vanessa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> we read Revelations um, mm -hmm. 7 9 through mm -hmm. 17. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, I don't I don't know that I have much to add to it. That's why I didn't unmute myself at the time. So um, now if you ask me a specific question, I'll go there. But uh, in reference to the scripture, the most that I can say is um, God is good. Yes. And all the time he's good. That, that's what I got. So I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> all right brother but no way you go on and then, uh, <laughs> i'm gonna lead up to the, you know. the next preacher over here by me okay 
no? Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, it's not like much can add to it. I think it's uh, very important uh, the unification that uh, we see not only by being engrafted into the family of uh, God and being joined there to Christ and being sat down as a lot of people don't realize that we've already been already have been sat down as the right hand with Christ. Uh, sometimes we get that. But uh, it's all the more important for us as you know, it's not to you know not to bring it bring a race thing into it, but it's it's even more so important because we as black people have an issue with uniting first time. And so even more so as Christians. So I mean, it's just uh, another vivid reminder that uh, this is uh, this is fundamental when it comes to uh, following Christ and uh, doing the things of God. Uh, unification being one of one mind. I mean, you just look around and see all the different uh, sex divisions uh, of of. Uh, Christianity due to the lack of unification. Everybody says they have the truth. We have the truth. And then they throw their nose in the air, you know, at others. When the fundamental thing is, you know, do you believe that Christ was uh, died for your sins and also to be saved from whatever, from the works of the enemy? And do you follow him? That's, that's the main thing. You know, and so if you have those bases together, then you're in, you know, you're engrafted into something. And it's up to you to find out the rest of the truth for yourself. Not to dive in behind uh, what we call, what I would call uh, secular teaching or whatever you would call it. But the truth is in his word. And let it it's not about, it's not about this particular church, this particular type of church, this particular pastor. It's about whether or not they're preaching the truth or not. But uh, unification is very important, especially for us black people to get in, you know, to get in, to understand and know what we're called to do and to uh, uh, become one uh, in essence. That sometimes we forget that there's a edification when we come together. You know, just to just to hear if it's if it's just the same thing you read last night, someone speak on it. You know, that edifies. You, you know, uh, I remember when uh, I was going through something. I mean, try to make it real quick. I was going through something when I first got out, and we as men, we're we're kind of the worst because we don't men of God anyway. We don't talk about what issues we go through. We just kind of keep it to ourselves. Okay, Mr. Rule. So uh, I was talking to a fellow prisoner, his brother, he, and I just. You know, just kind of got out there a little bit and told him, I said, man, this is what I'm struggling with. And he just said, you know what? And he was a, uh, he was a, not a pastor, but a, uh, a deacon. He said, you know what? I, I, I deal with the same thing all the time. And just to hear that, you know, uh, edified me, made me feel a lot better, made me feel like I was by myself, made me feel like, you know what I mean? The enemy is always trying to bring you down to a certain level somewhere, try to get us out of the truth somehow. Oh, you're not worthy of this. You can't do that. You, you know what I mean? Because of whatever faults and failures. But God knows that we are. What happened to him? He froze. He froze. Okay. <laughs> oh, something happened. I was like, what? Uh, go ahead, Gary. Uh, no, I was just thinking. I was just. They is. No. You can understand him? Go ahead, Gary. Yes, ma'am. I was just thinking about the uh, 144,000. As y'all spoke, I was thinking about the number that no man could count. Uh, the, the, the guys that had washed their robes in the blood. And, 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 and I look at that, that, that number, not the 144,000, but the number that no one could count after the 144,000. And I look and I see you in that number. I'm in that number. It's a whole lot of different people in that number. We didn't even think we're gonna be there. You see, 
So God got a whole bunch of people that gonna be, that gonna be there. Amen. You see, we we not even regarding it. God got a whole lot. Man, it's, it, it's, it's mind blowing. I was in that number. All of us in that number. The people in that, that we don't even believe gonna be in that number. It's it's in that number. It's a number that no man can count. That's a great number. I thank God that I'm in that number and y'all in that number. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll draw your turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I was just gonna say, uh, when I was listening to uh, Brother Bernard and Brother Gary speak, I was thinking about that old Christmas song when the saints go marching in. Oh, how I wanna be in that number. Yes. Um, I believe the reason why the church, the church of God is it can't unite or it's having problems united because we're caught up in the small thing. We're not caught up in the main thing. And the main thing is that uh, Jesus Christ made it very simple for us to uh, be considered in that number. You know, he said to believe in our heart and to confess with our mouth and we shall be saved. Uh, we got all these other criteria in order to become part of that number. But that doesn't supersede what God said to us. Uh, God made it very basic. Uh, he didn't make it complicated. He didn't say that you had to speak in tongues in order to be considered in that number. He didn't say that you had to be baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, he did give us a criteria for being baptized, but you also read about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, but you got certain churches saying, if you don't go down in Jesus' name, you can't be part of that number. You know, if you don't do this, you can't be part of that number. If you don't, if you don't believe like this, you can't be part of that number. That's not what God said. God made it very simple. He said, to confess with thy mouth and to believe with thy heart, then thou shalt be saved. Uh, so the reason why we can't count that number is because uh, it goes outside of what we have come up with in order to consider, uh, in order for people to be considered safe. It's going to be some people that we look around and we're going to be like, man, I just knew you was in hell. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 we, and they're going to be right next door to us or they're going to be across the table eating from us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, be careful about who you put into heaven as well. Be more careful about who you put into hell. Yes. That's all I want to say. Amen. Amen. What? Amen. Uh, we have no, no. exactly two minutes. No, is it our place to put anyone there? Actually, that's not our place. Or is it our place? That's right. Yeah. That's good. So we got two minutes. I'm going to have Brother Vanoy to go ahead and pray us out. May God bless you. Sunday school on the go. We got less than two minutes, about less than two minutes. So, Brother Vanoy, if you'll pray us out, thank you all for coming. We'll see y'all on Wednesday, those that come on Wednesday at seven. Yes. Ooh, we got another one coming. The, the sister gonna finally pray the bird, but I finally got uh, my link. Missionary, missionary, go missionary, Vanessa, go bring the word. Okay, let me quit talking. Go ahead, Vanessa, pray us out. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the same privilege to be able to come before you together. Heavenly Father, gather your name. We ask Heavenly Father that you continue to be with us as we go throughout our day. We ask Heavenly Father for revelation of your word and be guided by your Holy Spirit. We heed and yield to you, Heavenly Father. We just give you thanks, honor, and glory for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Get it in there. Hallelujah. <laughs> So you guys remember that we are united in parade. Yes. And we belong to God the Father and can't nobody take our place. Thank Amen. You. May God Amen. bless you and may God keep you. And we'll see you next Sunday for those that come on Sunday and we'll see you on Wednesday for those that come Wednesday. May God bless you. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bless week. You too. You too. <laughs>